good. I got coffee now. Up next, we're taking a spoiler-free look at Exit, the House of Riddles from Canes and, Com and Cosmos. All right, first off, I had an effort to be 100% transparent. I do have to say that I did receive a review copy of House of Riddles from Thames and Cosmos. I have no other compensation. They didn't pay me. They just gave me a copy of the game. Now, Exit the Game, the House of Riddles, was designed by Inca and Marcus Brand, a husband and wife team. And I think they did all the Exit games, but at least they've done the ones I've played. Uh, the features art by Sylvia Kristoff and Michaela Kuhn. Uh, was published in 2017, so this is one of the older ones, but not the oldest, uh, by, again, Thames and Cosmos. Playing times listed as 45 to 90 minutes, designed to play, according to the box, one to four players, while being best at two. Now, I personally say you should also wipe out that one. Yeah, I think you need more than one player, and more about why in a little bit. Now, normally, we would point you to an unboxing video at this point in the review, and Mo considered doing one, but we found that people were worried about spoilers, and we chose not to for that reason. Yeah, I was strongly considering it, because, like, there's nothing in there you can't see on the back of the box. But you know what? People were worried I'd flip a card or show something off, so fair enough. So now, House of Riddles is the second exit game uh, we have played. The first was The Secret Lab. Now, you can read my thoughts on The Secret Lab over on the blog. Uh, there was a podcast, we talked about it too, but I didn't do a formal review on the podcast. Now, the components in that game are very similar to the components in this one, and I have to assume now, having played two of those and seen the backs of the boxes of other ones, that the components are pretty much the same in most exit games. Um, and I'm going to let you know what's in there. I personally don't think it's a spoiler. If you go on Amazon or on Cosmos, you can see everything that comes in this box. So I'm just going to tell you the, the physical components. So you get a short instruction book, another booklet that you're told not to open that has a, a house on it, there's some different stacks of cards and then some interesting what they call unusual items. And the unusual items change in every exit game. Now, there is more than one stack, of, one more stack of cards than the other set. Um, there's a set of black-backed cards that are unique to this set that are different from the other one. Now, the unusual items are, there's a couple things on a thin punch board. There's this black shape. That's about the best I can describe it. There's a little magnifying glass where there's a slot cut out where the glass would be. And then there's a small blue ball uh, made of wood. So oh, a nice little assortment of uh, items that could be anything and really don't yeah. really don't help anyone, but uh, yeah. give you the set for which you can uh, figure out how to escape. Yeah. Now the instructions are written so that you read them through as you play the game for the first time. Basically, one of your four, up to four players would read through the rules. Starts off with the setup, which, again, this is right in the front. This isn't a spoiler. Your group arrives at the House of Riddles. You're there to meet three detectives. Each detective set up a puzzle room for you to make your way through. To get through these rooms, you're going to have to solve ten riddles. And, again, ten riddles is a common theme in all of the exit games. Every exit game that's been published is involves ten riddles. Now, to play the game, you start a timer. You open the first page of that book. On that first page, you should be able to find a clue card that you need to draw. These are blatantly obvious. Every exit game has it. It generally tends to be the A card. Between that clue card and what you're looking at in the book, you need to figure out something that will give you a three-digit code. Once you've got the code, you put it on a code wheel. Now, these code wheels are going to give flashbacks to anyone who's my and Sean's age who remembers playing text adventures on their PCs, because this is what we used to have to do for copy protection. And that is what these are. It's one of those wheels. It's got three spins, and you put in your code, and it's going to give you a number. You're going to take that number, you're going to go through the answer deck and pull out that card, and it's going to tell you you're right or wrong. And if you're wrong, you just keep trying to figure out the puzzle. If you're right, it's going to send you to another card. That other card's going to tell you what to do next. You keep going on until you've solved all 10 puzzles, stop the clock, get your reward, and figure out your final score. Simple enough. If at any time you're stuck, there are a set of clue cards. There are three clue cards for each of the 10 riddles. So a total of 30 cards. They're set up, so there's one, two, and three clues for each. The first clue just tells you if you have everything you need to solve the puzzle. So it just lists everything you have to have access to. This is useful to make sure you didn't miss something obvious. The second clue will give you a hint, and the third clue gives you the actual answer to the riddle. Your final score is based on how much time you took and the number of clue cards you used to finish the puzzle. Now, because we have played Secret Lab, we started off the House of Riddles already understanding the format. Like, there's just a certain style that the puzzles have in these exit games. And that really helped us get up and running, get going really quickly. 
We immediately knew what we were looking for, and the first puzzle made it very obvious how to get that information. Like, well, we know we're looking for this, and oh, there it is right in front of us. We just got to do some, put the pieces in order to get the answer. Now, what was surprising is this continued as we completed puzzle after puzzle, drew more cards, and flipped through the book. Most of the puzzles were extremely straightforward. Like, not only was it obvious what you're looking for, but where to find that information. It was more about going through the process. To be honest, of the 10 puzzles in this, only two really gave us any pause or made us even have to stop and think and consult with each other. Well, I mean, puzzle makers in general have styles. Even crossword uh, designers or writers you know, generally have a style. If, if you're, if you're, you, you can tell who has written a crossword puzzle if you're, mm -hmm. if you're that kind of person. Now, unfortunately, I wonder if this could be a concern uh, as, as, a, as a gamer and not a, just a, a general person as a gamer, if you've played one from these designers, uh, could the rest end up being too easy for this very reason that you sort of figured out their style and can roll through it steamroller style? In a way, I, I think so. The, the whole thing is all the exit games have the same basic format where you were trying to find the same, you're trying to find three things. The order of those three things, what those three things are, which leads you to the next clue. Once you know that, like when we first started the Secret Lab, a lot of the time at the beginning was just trying to figure out what the heck to do. Like, like we've got this booklet that, that you're allowed to, one, one of the changes, I think I get to this in a second, is you're allowed to look through the entire book in the secret lab. So you are just presented with like seven pages of clues and you have no idea which one you need first. Whereas House of Riddles was significantly easier than that. For one, you open the book to the first page and it warns you, do not flip the page until you finish this puzzle. So you know everything you need to know is on this page. And yes, it is. Like, it's obvious. Like, there's no no lateral thinking here. There's no thinking outside the box. You know everything you need is right there. Whereas in the secret lab, you're like, I don't know where to start. Like, my clue card gives you this. And another thing is each puzzle was also self-contained. So even when you're on puzzle six, all you have is everything for puzzle six. You have the clue cards for puzzle six. You have what page to be open. You might have one of those unusual objects in your hand. But you know all of that is needed for puzzle six. When you're done, you can put all that aside. Now, again, Secret Lab was different. Secret Lab, you might have two or three puzzles going concurrently and not know which parts you need. And it might be that you need to solve puzzle two to get the clue you need to finish puzzle one, which will actually lead you to puzzle three. Whereas this was very much solve puzzle one, solve puzzle two, solve puzzle three, solve puzzle four. So this had some interesting effects. Like one of the downfalls in House of Riddles with only having one puzzle at a time is only one person could really work on it. Like, as, especially if there was anything physical, right? Like, if you had to color something or connect lines or cut something, only one person could be doing that. While with Secret Lab, it could be, here, you work on the flag puzzles, I'm going to work on this puzzle. After a while, maybe we'll tra trade if we haven't solved it. Now, yes, you had two brains, like we had two of us looking at each puzzle, so there was that aspect. But I, it didn't, I don't know. It, it, I worry that if we had had four people, two of the people would have been bored. Like, they, they just, like, it's too many heads trying to crowd on something. Right. And also, there aren't multiple copies of things. So unless you bought multiple copies, which I would don't recommend in any way, there's no way you can each hold and look at the thing, right? There's only the one thing to look at. Now, I would say that this one even would be great one player. But there is one puzzle in here that specifically requires two people or a group to be able to play. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say there's this charades element to it which actually I found was rather neat. I can't see being able to solve that solo. Maybe with a mirror, I don't know. Like, I, we didn't try it solo. So, I, I again, I don't want to spoil anything. But because of that one puzzle, I don't think the box should say one player whatsoever. It should say two to four. It's almost like they've they've sort of come up with a system, build, building out that system with a, with a bunch of different options and different themes, uh, yep. and and maybe didn't, think about the fact that this one little thing they designed doesn't quite fit the mold that they've built themselves. Yes. Well, I have a feeling they probably put one to four on every box. Yeah, well, that's what every, I mean. Like, every, they, they built this, yeah. this, this, you know, set of, of things that they're doing and, you know, X number yeah. of puzzles that involve this number of things and, you know, a, a system to build it. Yeah. That, uh, and then this one cool thing they came up with uh -huh. doesn't quite work as well as they thought yeah. it should like it, it literally says like your partner i, right. I don't want to i think deanna even gave away a little bit more in the chat there but it actually says like, you know do this with your partner right 
So now overall, it was fun. Like it was neat. I, I do. I love. I like the 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 thing. It definitely helped knowing what to expect. That was a huge part of why we found this easy. But overall, it was just too easy. Like we never felt challenged. Um, for all but two of the puzzles, we literally figured out the second we flipped over the riddle card. It was like, oh, here's this fat picture. Oh, here's this riddle card. Oh, obviously we have to connect these two things. Oh, flip this over. Oh, oh, those are the, we're going to cut those out and do this with it. Oh, flip that over. Oh, no, well, this is easy. We're going to do this. Oh, wait. Oh, what's this? You know, like that happened a couple times. Um, now I do have to say we compare, I, I keep mentioning comparing it to secret lab and how secret lab was more difficult. For multiple reasons. They like said the biggest being you didn't know what clue went with what. Like you had multiple things going on at once and you had to piece them together. And there was that whole A leads to B leads to C, which makes sense. So it's kind of neat. Like you may have the clue for A that you got in the first room and you're trying to solve it. Well, it ends up you need something for three rooms later, which is cool, which totally worked. But it's harder. But you know what? Once I looked at it, I went and looked up the difficulty. Now, House of Riddles is a two out of five. All these games are ranked as a difficulty out of five. Secret Labs a 3.5 out of 5. So it's not only over the hill, right? Like if if 3 is your mid mark, it's over that by a, a margin. You're at 3.5 out of 5. So it makes sense that this would be easier. Now, between the two of us, we finished in 45 minutes, whereas the perfect score is under half, under an hour. I would say, too, that it was probably closer to half an hour because of the amount of time spent cutting. There were fiddly things you had to use scissors to cut out and that took like 15 minutes probably worth of cutting in this game. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Ancient Games and, and uh, Mitch Kayla in the chat room were talking, and I think I tend to agree that really I think the exit games are aimed at a more general audience and less specifically hobby gamer audience. I think, I think you may be on the scale of problem solving a little more uh, advanced, especially when you've done multiple uh, yeah. boxes. I don't, as I said, it's also the difficulty. Like, looking at, I just wouldn't get a difficulty two ever again. To me, two, two's too easy for us. Right. Whereas Secret Lab, definitely, like, it, it took us more than an hour. It took us time. Like, there was there were puzzles that took us a while to solve. We did get through it. Um, we didn't, we had to use clues, but we only had to use clues because there was a uh, errata, there was a typo. Um, but this time, we didn't even touch the clue deck. Now, I got to say, one thing that was neat in this was the end game reward. I actually thought was really cool. It was just a neat thing that they did. I really don't want to spoil I want to spoil it. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are going to stick around for the after show, if you want to know what the reward is, I thought it was very neat. I thought it was a cool thing, but I don't want to give it away. Um, it wasn't neat enough to justify grabbing House of Riddles. If you, if, if you found Secret Lab about the right level, you're going to find this too easy. I, I got to admit, it wasn't that fulfilling. Like, like, yeah, the reward was neat, but like, it was just too easy. Like, like, literally, like, flip it, flip it. Oh, we have to do this, do it. Oh, flip it, flip, yeah, yeah, cut this out, do this. Yep, done it. Okay, color this in, done it. Like, it was that simple. It was just like immediately obvious. It reminded me of my kids going through a puzzle book where you just flip it and it doesn't even need to tell you at the bottom of the page. You just immediately start connecting the dots or coloring in the, the different shapes. Uh, I am kind of glad that this was a review copy that I didn't pay the, like, full price these are 15.99 us i'm kind of like i like to compare it to a night out of the movies this didn't feel as fun as a night out of the movies yeah well i mean with night out of the movies you expect to get a couple of hours of fun 45 minutes is, is pretty short for a night you know a night of the movie right. type without price. the challenge right like yeah. it, it like like i didn't feel great that we got it done in 45 it was like yeah oh, we rocked that if i had had that feeling then maybe it's a little better than going to watch the latest star wars movie now on a positive note I think this might be the great entry point because what we struggled with at the secret lab was the, what are we trying to do? Like, like if you've never played an exit game, you're like, I don't know. This was so clear on what you had to do. Like it was just blatantly obvious. Here it is on the first page. You're going to do this to get you this answer that lets you progress. Secret lab did not have that. And we fumbled and it was a little frustrating at the start, which is fine. But I think if you were going to buy an exit game for the first time, this might be a great intro. I think it's a better intro than Secret Lab. Now, Secret Lab was the first one they published, which is why I bought it. So that's what I'm thinking is this is a great intro one. Plus, I also think it might be good if you were playing with kids. Like, I think we could have grabbed Big G to play this one. And she could have easily done some of the puzzles with us. So I think this one had more of a family feel to it. So I would say at this point, if you haven't tried an exit game, I do recommend the series. They are fun. This might be a great entry point. But if you played any before, 
I'd only suggest this if you played, say, The Secret Lab. Again, it's a 3.5. If you played a 3.5 and found it frustrating and difficult, here's a way to step down. Like, it, it, everyone thinks differently. Everyone has different skills. Everyone's better or worse at problem solving. Puzzles aren't everyone's forte. Maybe Deanna and I are really good at them. I don't know. I, I, I like to think we're smart people. Maybe we're brilliant. We piled through this and you'd have more difficulty with it. But it, just comparing that Secret Lab being their first one, being the 3.5 part, if you found that at all easier, got through that in an hour to an hour and a half, I think this is you're just going to blow through it. All right. Now, before we wrap this up, I would also want to talk about the Cosmos Helper app. So one of the things we did different this exit game playthrough was we tried out the Cosmos Helper app. Now, this is a generic app for all the Cosmos games. And it just has a list of, I don't know if it's every game they publish, but an awful lot of the games they publish. And each game will have different types of support. So for the exit games, there is literally a separate app for every exit game, which is kind of impressive, uh, including House of Riddles. Now, it includes two things that you get to choose from. One's a tutorial, and the second is a themed timer. Now, the tutorial seemed excellent. It completely replaces the rulebook from the box, introduces you to the game, gives you the background story with some, like, back sounds in the background and a guy with a British voice reading it off a little, you know, possibly more impressive than someone else at the table telling you the story, and then shows you how to play, like, in detail, with examples, with stop and do this now, and has you open your box and set up your box and put the cards out and put uh, separate everything into piles and literally walks you through. This is great for visual learners. Plus, it adds some neat things, the neat, neat atmosphere. But it didn't match. The story was completely off. The story in the app said you are traveling by yourself to a castle to explore the surrounding territory. And then another part of the app mentions there's three detectives. You're going to try to save three detectives named Justice, Peter, and Bob. Well, the game we played, there were three detectives, but they were completely different names, which just was really odd. We had to rescue Sandra, Mario, and Tom. This is, and, this is sounding a lot like uh, Lopan, Legacy of Lopan all over again. Yes, yeah, exactly. So so I don't get it. Like, it was just weird. Like, it was perfect for teaching us how to play, but we had to throw everything that told us about the story. Like, yeah, there's three detectives, but like, and, and Sandra, Mario, and Tom were referenced multiple times. The other names we never heard again. It was weird. And, and we weren't in a castle, we were in a house. And it was talking about going through the countryside and exploring these different castles. So I don't know if they recorded, the, like, are there two exit games where you're trying to save detectives? Uh, I do know these were published in German first, and they translated it one way, and then when they published it, they changed the name. I have no idea. I, I have no idea what happened here why it was that far off, but man, that was confusing. Now, the timer was great. I have no complaints about the timer. It's themed to the game. It has artwork that matched the artwork on the box. It had some background ambiance and sound effects and noises. Um, I noticed once we got past the half hour mark, it started to sound a little more, you know, panicked and agitated. Um, plus, it works out your score at the end, which is really cool. Like, you hit done when you're done, and it asks how many clue cards, and then it gives you a nice screen that you can share on social media and stuff like that. So that part's cool. So I do recommend the app for the timer that if you've never played an exit game before, you might want to go through one of the tutorials just to ignore what they're they're saying about background. I, I, I don't know. So there is I, there it, is an exit called uh, the Forbidden Castle, but that's the only castle I can find in the entire list of exit games. Like, well, what, what are the odds of the Forbidden Castle? You're also trying to save three detectives. Like, well, I, it is finally a vacation. Uh, the short description is finally a vacation. This year, you're going to a, an idyllic village in the mountains, taking the train. Yeah, that sounds like they might have mixed up the descriptions. Okay. Because, like, this one, this is the other thing, right? In the story, it says you're with the partners, and you need a partner while playing. That was the other thing. Like, right. like that, again, goes to the two players. Well, and, that, and the Forbidden Castle talks about, mentions sort of a group, too, but and says one to four. I wonder, yeah. if, I wonder if that's a... Like I said, I think it's a generic what they put on all their boxes. Right. I will say there was there was one riddle in here that, that, that was very neat and thought outside the box. I was impressed by... the Like, there were two that we had to work on, and one one was very... I'm like, wow, that, that, that's cool. Like, they did a good thing. I'm impressed they were able to put this many out. Like I said, the, the, the key is learning how these systems work really helps. Like, now that we know how exit games work... Unfortunately, I have one more to play here. Uh, we have the haunted roller coaster, and I'm a little worried because it's also difficulty two. So, 
you'll get my review of the haunted roller coaster when Deanna and I play through that one. Maybe it won't be as bad. This one, I don't know if, if we were just on the ball or just a little too easy, but I still think great entry point to the series. I wish we played this before the secret lab. This would have made the secret lab more enjoyable because we wouldn't have had that frustration at the beginning. Well, good to know. And so if you are looking to jump in, you can check a more in-depth look at Exit the House of Riddles at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Reviews.